Good evening and welcome to Beyond the Politics, our regular look at the goings-on here in the Quincy region and the people working so hard behind the scenes to make it happen. I'm your host, Paul Martin. Joining me, as always, my co-host, regular columnist for the Bubble Intelligencer, Colin Mackay. Thanks, Paul. And our special guest tonight, our first ever repeat guest on Beyond the Politics, Mayor of the City of Belleville, Mitch Panchuk. Hello there. It's, uh, I'm the repeat because I was the first one, right? That's right. Your first ever show, so it's, uh, it's great to be back. You were number one, and now you're number 10. Okay. <laughs> you're number 10. You know, it's the way it goes. Uh, they always say a pat on the back is a short distance from a kick in the pants. So <laughs> one to 10 is not that bad, I guess. There you go. So, so much has happened since mm -hmm. you were here for the very first show in late October, and let's get right into it. Of course, literally, it was only a few days. It was like a week and a half after you were here that Pat Culhane passed away. A uh, very sobering event for, and a big loss still for the very very fortunate citizens of Belleville who had a chance to have contact with her for the past seven decades. But that has literally consumed a big period of the time in between then and now, and at one of the most recent meetings, the Tyler Alsop appointment as a replacement. So this is your first chance here to talk about the whole process. Yeah. So what, what, what has that entire journey been like? Well, you know, uh, I got a call when I was uh, helping to prepare dinner uh, on a night from uh, Pat's sister, Anne, telling me that she had had a fall and that she um, was at the hospital and it was very serious. And that was, I believe it was on the Saturday, uh, early Saturday evening. And so through the course of Saturday and Sunday, and the family had to make some difficult decisions about prolonging her care. Um, you know, so just, just after midnight on, on the Monday morning, um, you know, it was confirmed to me that she had, that she had passed away. So, um, you know, letting council know we had a meeting the next day. We did have some business we had to conduct, um, trying to figure out how we would do that delicately, um, to respect, uh, you know, the dignity of Pat Culhane's uh, contribution to the city. Um, at the same time, giving people the chance to grieve because, you know, you know, she had been a nurse here in this community for 51 years and so many people's lives were touched by, by her. So, um, you know, we... We struggled with how to do it and, and what to do. Um, you know, a, a, a little bit over a week after, uh, there was the her internment. So there was a, a drive-by outside of City Hall where a lot of people came. Again, really difficult because of COVID, where you couldn't get together. And and I and you know, it's it's not just with with Pat Culhane's family, but you look at all the people over the last year that have lost someone important to them. You can't get together. You can't have a, um, you know, the, the, the show of sympathy that we as a community want to do for, for people. You know, the simple gesture of hugging and, uh, and, and, and sharing that human empathy was, was, was missing. And so, um, you know, we went through that whole process and then shortly thereafter, uh, you know, we started to get uh, contact from, from different people um, wanting to ensure that certain things happen with the replacement of of uh, Pat in the seat in council, and we had a you know a, a large um, and strong voice about uh, the fact that uh, you know the city council needs to be representative of the population, and to have only one woman on Belleville City Council was a concern. Um, but at the same time, there were people who really believed that tradition of picking the unsuccessful candidate who may be the runner-up was the one that we had to do. Um, you know, it had been 16 years since we had last gone through that. So there were all those emotions and loss and struggles about what you do and, and whatnot. And, uh, you know, it, it was difficult. And um, in December, when, when the matter first came up, um, you know, it was not going to be a unanimous decision. And I could, I could see that. And so, um, you know, having it be a 5-3 decision uh, was not something that I felt was really helpful or healthy for council moving forward, not just for the person coming on. Which 5-3 decision are we talking about the, right now? The first one that ended up in a 4-4 tie. If, if Let's say that I had changed my, my vote and it had been a 5-3 mm -hmm. uh, decision, that would have really um, you know divided council uh, going forward. It wouldn't have been good for the person coming on, nor for the people that were there. So you know we had to find a path to get to a point where we could have a chance of getting a unanimous uh, agreement. In the end, we almost had a unanimous agreement. We had seven councillors in favour, one against appointing Tyler Alsap, and uh, and he was done at the uh, done uh, that was done at the end of January. Um, he's already had his first meeting under his belt. Uh, did really well. Um, I had a chance to to speak with him a number of times. Um, During this process, you had to. It was a tough call, tough decisions. Mm. Did you ever feel that oh, this is not the right way to go, or 
or how did you feel or this well I shouldn't yeah. have done this or you you know well how I, did you feel about or war yeah. another question another way to look at it is when did you sort of change your mind yeah. Well, I knew at the beginning, Colin, that there was no way we were going to make people happy. Well, <laughs> no matter I, what we decided, we were, was going to be a significant, uh, um, you know, pushback on this. Uh, we were already hearing issues of Belleville Council not being representative of the community back in the spring during the Black Lives Matter uh, situation, and there were already people talking about the fact that seven males and two women were not reflective of the fact that that females comprise fifty one percent of the population. But only what, 22 percent? 22 percent of that. Well, but there was also only 22 percent on on council. You mm -hmm. know, uh, I believe nationally the average is 33 percent of councils have female uh, composition, and we were well below that at only 22 percent. So the point I'm I was I'm saying is that we knew that it was going to be a challenge. The job I think for me was to try to figure a path forward that we could do a couple things. First of all, generate more consensus on the part of council. So a compromise needed to happen, and I think that. The, uh, the comments that were made by councillors, they wanted to see um, you know, more diversity presented, more options presented. And so I think the striking of the ad hoc committee, the fact that we had 19 applicants, um, uh, you know, 13 had, uh, were, were female, uh, that was more than double what had run in the 2018 election. Um, only three had ever run before for political office, so a lot of new folks. Uh, there were people that represented all the different diversity uh, components of the city. Those were the positives that came out about it, and that allowed people like myself and Councillor Sanderson and Councillor uh, Sean Kelly to compromise. And fair, that's a fair to, point. Able but to pick uh, Tyler also. Okay, my, I guess my question would be then: People are sitting here and going, "Well, why did you decide not to go to the next in line?" Well, I mean, historically, that's where yeah. it's been in this community. I know it's not the law; you don't have to do that. But why? Why did well, you? There, why? There, are num there are a number of reasons, including the minist Ministry of Municipal Affairs. Their mm -hmm. policy guidelines recommend that when appointing a person to fill the vacancy on council, that councils consider diversity of their community. And that was, that's clearly in the policy document, and obviously that's the direction that they're going to be going on in the future. But again, it had been 16 years since we had had uh, that last. Councillor Garnet Thompson was the last person prior to Tyler Alsop that was appointed. But you know, at that day, I would say there was not really consensus. And over the coming days and weeks after December 14th, there was clear consensus in the community, at least those who were speaking up. Um, you know, and in the end, we made the decision that I think those, those folks wanted to see. But at the same time, we also made a point about the fact that we want, as a community, to have a more diverse, reflective uh, council in the future, and we hope that more people will present themselves in the 2022 election to be able to be elected for those spots. Well, I think, I think it's great, but I, I, I think you should remember, too, that Belleville has had three female mayors as well. We've so had four, actually. Four? Yeah, right. we've had four female mayors, and, uh, but we've also had 72 male. So when you look at the, the issue, you know, four out of 76 is not a large uh, proportion. No, it's so, not. So, you know, we have room to improve. Um, and I think that part of the whole challenge is that, um, you know, there's a saying, you cannot be what you cannot see. And so that's why it's important to have uh, role models and examples and positions. But I don't think anybody's um, going to disagree with that. The, really? chal the challenge is now we have eight men and one woman on council. Oh, for sure. So when you talk about the fact that you cannot be what you cannot see, clearly there are no visible minorities that people can see. There are no new Canadians. There are, there are very few newcomers uh, there. I think I'm the newest uh, resident uh, on council, and I've been here for 20 years. So when, it t when you talk about these types yeah. of things, you have to make a, a, a deliberate effort to invite people to be part of something if you really want to say they're welcome. You can't just say, well, hey, Anybody can do it because the problem is not everybody is doing it. So how, I, I, oh, yeah, I, don't, yeah, okay. I don't want to interject too much, but we have a lot. To, we have a lot to go over. So two things. One. So do you feel then that having this broader conversation was helpful? If if you could do this again, would you have followed the same path to try to give people another way of getting yeah. input? Well, you know, that's a tough question because uh, we have the benefit of hindsight now. Mm -hmm. So if I, were to go back, if I was to be able to decide today what we should have done in December, then, well, then I would have done it differently, absolutely. Let, theoretical but, question. Then. But when you look at this fact that what we knew at the time on December the 14th, and then what we learned in the process we went through, there are a lot of positives that have come out of this. Um, and, and again, we energized and we got a lot of interest and we brought attention to an issue that everybody in Belleville says they want to see progress on. 
So now we will work over the next couple of years to ensure that we uh, we have ways. Um, the in, our inclusion committee is looking at all of our policies, for example, committee appointments, mm -hmm. how we can encourage more diversity uh, in our committees, which sometimes can be a really great stepping stone for people to seek uh, elected office. Um, and then, you know, we'll, we'll move forward. Everybody around the council table all talked about the importance of diversity on Belleville City Council. Now we're going to have to walk the talk. And I think that is one good thing that may have come from this process. So that's, that's the way of, that was my second part, the way of encouraging representation. Going back to now 1B, there is the possibility of another council seat without someone passing away, which is to say there's someone sitting on council right now who could be running for a federal office very soon. Yeah. And that would create a vacancy if that person were successful. So it's not a hypothetical, it could happen. Sometimes it could happen and you know, I, and if it I, does, will we do something similar well, again? Well, I can't speak for anyone else but myself, um, but I will be voting for the next person who was <laughs> unsuccessful in line. Uh, you know, I think we've all, we've all learned, learned through it. And who would um, be the next person in line? It depends on who, which councillor you're talking about because sure. there may be multiple councillors that are seeking uh. Uh, different opportunities or you know, in, the, in the future. So depending on what happens, if it's Ward 1, the next in line now would be Carol Feeney. Yes. Uh, she finished 8th um, uh, uh, in mm -hmm the 2018 election and so that would help us with a, the diversity issue in terms of we get back to seven and two which would still be an underrepresentation, but at least a bit better but if you look at Tyler Alsop you've got a young guy now instead of for sure absolutely and you know and, and Tyler's gonna bring a, but it was never about Tyler you know at least and I said that very clearly for me uh, you know I like Tyler I, I uh, you know I thought very fondly of him before there were a number of times in the 2018 election when I would speak to residents and they were asking about who they thought uh, who I thought they should vote for in the municipal uh, uh, for council and after talking to them and getting some of their concerns I recommended Tyler to several of them one of the people on my campaign team reminded me of that fact uh, you know through it so it was never about Tyler Alsap it was about the composition of council moving forward and now we have to deal with the fact that we are underrepresented quite severely uh, in, in a gender way and uh, and so you know the comments I made at that council meeting when we made the decision was how do we ensure that that voice is represented and you know and, and when you speak about 50% of the population, it's not just one voice that can do that job uh, because there isn't just one voice in that, in that diversity. Mm -hmm. So uh, we will move forward and uh, we will do our very best um, as we have over the last uh, couple of years uh, as we move forward. And uh, you know, I'm confident we brought attention to the fact and people will, uh, will, 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 you know, will be wanting us to, to make sure that all points of view are represented. So just to, to put a final point on it. So if that seat becomes open in Ward 1, you would vote for the next person in line, which is whether it's Ward 1 or Ward 2, you know, and, and fortunately for us and the next in, in Ward 2 would be Catherine would, Brown. would be another female as well yeah. in Catherine Brown. So, you know, absolutely that, uh, you know, for me, this was a matter of gender. Uh, you know, when you when you get elected into public office, you don't just represent those people who voted for you. You also represent those who didn't vote for you and voted mm -hmm. for someone else. But you also have to not forget those that did not vote at all. Someone has to be, you still represent them and you still have to be their voice. So part of what I want to do is make sure that all those voices are represented uh, in our decisions uh, and, and our discussion. And, uh, you know, for me, that, why, that was why gender was such an important issue as well. And that will have to wait till the next show. Mitch Panchuk, Beyond the Politics.